Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth, where we're talking about some of the amazing scientific facts in the Quran that have been only discovered recently with modern scientific knowledge. Yet these things were mentioned in a book 1,400 years old. Let's look at some more of the amazing statements in the Quran. In the 10th surah, in the 5th ayah, the 5th verse, it says, It is He, meaning God, Allah, who made the sun a shining lamp and the moon as a light and measured out their stages. Now the Quran describes the sun as siraj. Now the word siraj means torch, means it's something that generates its own heat and light. Whereas this, the moon is described as a nur. Now a nur means a light that is originating from another source. And of course, this is the correct understanding. The moon reflects the light of the sun. It's common knowledge today, but not necessarily so in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. Let's see what one of the respected cosmologists and scientists in the field of astronomy had to say when he was shown some of the statements in the Quran concerning his field of expertise. Professor Yushidi Kusan, who's the director of the Tokyo Observatory in Tokyo in Japan, and this is what he said, I say, I am very much impressed by finding true astronomical facts in the Quran. And for us modern astronomers who have been studying a very small piece of the universe, we have concentrated our efforts for understanding that very small part. Because by using telescopes, we can only see a very few parts of the sky without thinking about the whole universe. So by reading the Quran and by answering to questions, I think I can find my future way for investigating the universe. What he's saying is that the one who is writing the Quran, the one who is revealing the Quran, the one who is speaking the words of the Quran, is talking as if he is looking at the whole universe together, as opposed to the scientist who concentrates on observing this bit or that bit of the universe, which is what most astronomers do. Who is it that sees the whole universe altogether? Who is it who sees all things in all places in all times, except Allah, the mighty, the wise? So these are some of the amazing scientific facts. And we're going to move on also to another area that particularly interested me, because when I was at school, one of the subjects that I studied was geography and a sub-subject of that was of course geology. And I do remember when I first read the Quran 20 years ago and it was reading the Quran that motivated me to embrace Islam. One of the things that stuck in my head and I remember it until today was coming across the descriptions in the Quran of mountains. So let's go through some of the things the Quran says about mountains. For example, in the 78th surah, in verses 6 to 7, Allah says, Have we not made the earth an expanse and the mountains stakes? The word that is used here is otad. Otad, meaning stake, is like the, the peg of the tent. So the peg of the tent goes into the ground. It holds the rope that holds the tent. So you have a small part of the peg sticking up from the ground, but the majority of the peg is inside the ground. The Quran also says in the 31st surah, or the 31st chapter in the 10th verse, and Allah has cast into the mountains, standing firm, so that it does not shake with you. Now today, with modern sonar technology, they have been able to bounce sound waves down through the earth's crust. And according to the different rates at which the sound waves are reflected back and are measured, they can tell the different density of the earth's crust as opposed to what is hard and what is soft, what is from the crust and what is from the magna. And what they have discovered with this technology 
is exactly what the Quran was saying 1,400 years ago. That the mountains have roots. The mountains, like the peg of the tent, not only do they go, go above the earth's surface, the mountains go deeply into the earth's core. And they act, it has been theorized, as stabilizers. They help to stabilize the earth's surface. And there's two ways in which they do that. Number one, because the earth is composed of tectonic plates. The crust of the earth is actually made of different plates. And it is the movement of these plates that causes earthquakes. When these plates move against each other, the friction of that movement causes earthquakes. And that's also what they think how continental drift has happened. Originally, they believe all the continents were one continent. And then because of plate tectonics, it moved. But the Quran is saying is the mountains act as stabilizers. They help to stabilize the earth's crust. And this is something that has actually been theorized by modern geologists. There's another way in which the mountains may act as a stabilizing factor. And that is to do with the rotation. Maybe if you try and spin something, you will find that if it is not really spherical, it will, not, it will start to ro rotate and then it will start to wobble out of shape. And it is possible that the mountains actually act as a counterbalance to keep the Earth's rotation smooth. I do stress, of course, that these are theories, but it is very interesting what the Qur'an is saying 1,400 years ago. And that it seems to be preempting the ideas and the knowledge that is being produced by modern day science. Certainly, it is a fact that is established that the mountains have roots. And the Quran is saying that the mountains are like altered, the pegs of a tent. So, this is a remarkable scientific fact. It's one I remember sticking in my mind when I first read the Quran about 20 years ago. So these are one of the remarkable things. Also, the Qur'an mentions some aspects of animal and plant life. For example, the 16th chapter of the Qur'an is called Surah Al-Nahl, which means the Surah of the Bee. And one of the aspects of the Qur'an in this Surah, it is talking about the bee. And it's very interesting that the word that is used in the Qur'an for the bee that flies around gathering honey or gathering the nectar for the honey, it is used in the female form. The gender that it is used is feminine. Although until recently it was believed that the bees were actually soldiers. They were males. And the ruler of the hive was a king. But as it happens, in fact, we know that the bees are indeed female. And they are owned or they are headed by a queen. That's why we say the queen bee. It's also true that the Quran mentions that plants have different genders. And the winds are a means of fertilization for the plants. So in the 15th chapter of the Quran, in the 22nd verse, it says that we, meaning Allah the creator, this is the we of nobility. It does not mean there is more than one God, of course. It is we in the sense that Royalty uses the term we, it's a sense of honor and nobility. So the royal we, they call it. We sent forth the winds that fessontate, that means that the fertilize things. These are all recently discovered things. Also, we find the Greek philosopher Democritus, who lived from 460 to 361 BC. He advanced the theory that matter was composed of tiny indivisible particles called atoms. And they believed that this was the base upon which all of things were made. And there was nothing smaller than the atom. However, modern science has discovered that atom is in fact divisible. And the atom has been split. And the atom itself is composed of smaller elements. The Quran says 1,400 years ago in the 34th chapter and the third ayah or the third verse, he is aware of an atom's weight in the heavens and on the earth and even anything smaller than that. Meaning there is something smaller than atom and Allah, God, is aware of it. Every single thing.
There's another thing I want to mention. God mentions in the Quran some amazing things about the human beings. And one of the things is about our nerves. Here is a very frightening and terrifying passage of the Quran. It's mentioned in the 75th chapter in ayahs 3 to 4. Does mankind think that we cannot assemble his bones? Nay, we are able to put together in perfect order the very tips of his fingers. God is telling us he can recreate us on this day, this terrifying day, this frightening day, the day of judgment. He is able to recreate you, even if you are dust, even you are bones to the very tip of your finger. Why the very tip of your finger? Of course, you've all heard of fingerprinting, haven't you? Every single human being's fingerprint is unique. Why did God mention the fingerprint? Why did God mention the tip of the finger? This is the uniqueness of the human being. God is telling us, look, I can recreate you even to this fingertip. That is the power that I have. Even to your most unique attribute, I can create you to that. Be mindful, be careful. I will create you again on the day of judgment and I will judge you and ask you about every single thing that you have done. This is not common knowledge. How did anyone 1,400 years ago know about fingerprinting? And Allah warns us in the fourth chapter of the Quran, in the 56th verse, those who reject our signs, we shall soon cast them into the hellfire. And as often as their skins are roasted through, we shall change them for fresh skins so they may truly taste the penalty. For Allah is exalted in power of the wise. This is a very frightening description of the hellfire. God is going to burn the skin and recreate the skin and burn the skin. So the people in the hellfire will taste the punishment. Why is the Quran saying that? It has only recently been known and discovered that when the skin is burnt, a person does not feel any pain. That's why when a person suffers severe burns, a doctor will prick the skin to see if the person feels pain. If he feels pain, there are still nerve receptors left. If he does not, that means his skin has been so badly burnt, he cannot feel pain. So if God put people in the hellfire and the hell burnt their skins, after that they will not feel the pain. So Allah is going to recreate the skin again, so they will keep on tasting the punishment. It is a very severe warning from the one who has created you. He knows you better than you know yourself. And he is warning you in his book of his knowledge and his ability that if you do not believe in him and follow his guidance, see what is waiting for those people who reject the faith. My dear listeners, we have only one more thing we want to mention. The tree of Zakum, which will be the food of sinners and it will be like boiling oil that will boil in their bellies, like the boiling of scalding water. Taste this, Allah says in the Quran. Verily you are pretending to be the mighty, the generous. Look at those arrogant people, pretending to be mighty, pretending to be generous, but taste the Z tree of zakum that will boil in your belly. And it says they will drink a water that cuts their bowels to pieces. It is very interesting that thermal receptors are not present in the intestines, but it is in the bowels. And the contents and the receptors in the bowels are highly sensitive. It's a very, very sensitive area. And that is where pain is initiated. It's not a common knowledge 1,400 years ago. But it is a fact that is mentioned in the Quran as a stark warning to all those people who reject faith in God. God has combined the scientific facts with the severe warnings of those who disbelieve in him. Our invitation is to invite you to his mercy, to his guidance and his forgiveness by accepting these truths, the proof that Islam is the truth. Join us in the next episode for some amazing prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad and the Quran. And until then, may God's peace and blessings and guidance be with you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.